Well, hello again. Back on trail here at White Pass. Random. It is, let's see, the 12th, Saturday the 12th of August. And uh, I took a week off, got cleaned up. Obviously, I got a nice, pretty new haircut trimmed up. I don't look like a dirty hiker anymore, unfortunately. I don't feel like I fit in, but um, got a new pack. And um, anyway, I got put on at White Pass. That's just where my ride ended up going, so that's what I took. And while I'm out here in the White Pass area, I figured I would do a um, like a timeline video as best as I could figure of Chris Fowler, Sherpa's last last known location and days on the trail and try to replay it a little bit as best I could. Um, I've downloaded Doppler radar maps of those dates when that storm rolled in and um, his last known timeline. So he got on trail on October 12th at about 2.30, he was dropped off. So I'm gonna work off that timeline even though it's 7.30 when I got on, it's about eight o'clock now. And um, I'm gonna work from that timeline and what kind of would have transpired with the weather and where he would have been. So doing math based on where how he would have been hiking because he'd been doing the whole trail so he was in shape and he's probably moving pretty good i'm guessing he's doing about three miles an hour he had been given some new gear i believe tent and uh, a pair of shoes because he was normally hiking in chacos um so he would have been weighted down you know a couple more pounds that he wasn't used to um, he might have picked up some more gear back in Packwood, evidently. Um, there is a possibility of that from what people figured out. He might have been preparing for the weather somehow. So he might have been two or three pounds heavier. Um, so he had taken a break in Packwood, got back on. And um, I figure by... By dusk, he would have put in about 12 to 15 miles, roughly, before he set up camp. Um, we know that his phone wasn't charging, so if I was Chris right now, I would have a little more weight. A phone that possibly is about to die or that doesn't have much battery. Um, his last known ping on the phone was just north of here on the trail a little bit. Um, I think it was at 5 p.m. So he would have been, I don't know, nine miles in, eight miles in, something like that. So I, uh, he, we know he had half miles app on his phone. I uh, don't think he had paper maps, so what that means is if his phone dies, he has no maps. Which doesn't mean you're going to lose the trail, even if it's dumping rain. But it does mean that you don't know where your next exit point might be, or how many miles you've gone. Or, you know, if you're trying to look for an escape route to get off trail, you can't see terrain you can't see the next point I have half miles on my phone I also have gut hooks and I also have hikerbot so I have three different apps on my phone um, and the thing about the um, the app he was using the half mile app is it does not from what I tell I don't play with it a whole lot but it doesn't look like it has an actual map it just has a point to point reference of what's ahead of you so it'll say it'll say you know campsite you know 0.2 miles ahead or water source you know a mile and a half ahead or chinook pass 30 miles ahead that's how it works it doesn't actually show you on the map so it's a little different app because it doesn't really have a map um what else 
Um, yeah, I think that's about it for now. I th I'll get this camera out probably when I get to about 13 or 14 mile mark where I think he might have set up camp. We'll check that out and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm at mile 2301 or so. That would put me at about nine miles in, which by my math, Sherpa would have been a pretty fast hiker. Put him at about three miles an hour or so, so 5.30 at nine miles in. Um, and at 5.30 is about, according to the Doppler, when the weather started to shift and started raining off and on. Um, and later on by like 7.30, it was just full on rain and um, with no breaks really. So I checked the NOAA website, average temperatures in this area um, on the 12th, today would be the 12th of October and tomorrow the 13th. Average temperature was about 45 degrees, the high average. The low of that day was about 35, I'm no, excuse me, 34 it was. And I was just below Chinook Pass a little bit, which is still about uh, 18 miles ahead of me. So at this point I would have got rain gear out and put my rain gear on. I don't know if he had full-on rain gear that covered his pack and everything, or if he just had body rain gear and pack cover, or if he had garbage bag liner to line the inside of his pack and keep just his gear dry and had rain gear, no pack cover. There's a few different ways you can do it, but um, anyway, if I was sure if I would have put my rain gear on, especially if I knew there was weather coming, which it sounded like he did know that. And so, try to keep dry as soon as you're wet. Especially if you can't get into the sun, like, it, I mean, it's 70 degrees right now. If I can't get into nice weather to dry out, you're never gonna dry out. Um, so, keep hiking though I don't think I'd stop and put up camp because then all my all the stuff I pull out is gonna get wet so anyway that's what I would do so we'll check back in a little bit so uh, I wanted to make a note while I was hiking back there and doing my video uh, I got a text message from Christina and um, the point is that I have Verizon service and so did Sherpa and so I've been turning my phone off and on to check and see if I get service and so back there I at least got an incoming message I don't know if I'd ever get a message out but I think it's worth noting um, even though um, I think that Sherpa's phone might have died by then the last ping on his phone was like two miles in from the trailhead so um, he's having troubles charging so it might have already been dead but I just thought I'd note that at mile nine I did get a message in on Verizon so here I am at mile 2304.8 and this is about 12 and a half miles north of White Pass um, and this would have been about 6.30 Sherpa time which would have put him at just about sunset so it would have been getting dark about now and um, at this mile mark, there's this creek. Um, and you got this great camp area here. There's a lot of sites here on both sides of this creek. Um, it's a little exposed. Um, so I don't know if you would have picked this spot because it's kind of exposed. There's not many trees to hide under and if he's wet and potentially trying to avoid getting more wet um, and set up his tent 
in a dry spot this might not be the best area I mean I'm looking around and I can maybe see a couple places to put a, a tent under a tree or something um, but it's not I mean if you're wet and you're done for the day and you've been hiking you know like three hours now in the rain you might just be ready to throw down and um, set up wherever you can find a flat spot that looks good so this is just speculation I don't know if you picked this spot or not I think if I was hiking all day and or not all day but all afternoon and um, I was now wet and getting colder um, and it was getting dark I'd probably be done for the day um, so yeah just another thought Mile 2304.8. So here I am at mile 2310. I'm at 5,700 feet. And um, I've passed several campsites. And um, I think, you know, in Sherpa time, this would be about 8.30 at night um, to get this far. Um, and at that point, he would have been rained on for like four hours. Um, be pretty wet, miserable probably, even if he had rain gear on. Um, I don't think, you know. Even with rain gear, you end up getting wet if it rains constantly. Um, and I honestly think that this would be... There's a campsite back there about a little over half a mile that I meant to stop at. But um, I think that would have been the absolutely last point after dark that he would have hiked to. I mean, it seems like... He would have been so wet and cold and wanting to, you know, hang it up for the day that I don't, I really don't think he would have hiked much further than this. Um, so I'm at the boundary of Mount Rainier Park and um, um, I think I'll continue these videos as if I got up the next morning and from that last campsite about a half mile back, I would, I would base it off of that the absolute furthest I think he would have gone on the 12th um, and, and we'll go that way so if it was morning of the 13th it would have rained most of the night which in that case um, my tent um, possibly my sleeping bag would have been wet if you, if you camped out in the rain even with a rain fly on in constant rain um, especially with the breeze or some wind um, it's hard to keep rain out of your tent um, you dig like a, a moat around your tent and try to divert the, the water that's trying to run in um, and depending on how heavy the rain is falling sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't and you end up with you know rain coming in the bottom um, with a breeze blowing, the rain comes in the sides and drips in through the through the uh, rain fly. It depends on the tent, um, but you know, possibly he could be. You know, all his gear could be wet. His tent, his sleeping bag, which makes him heavier, which makes everything just really miserable. And if the temperatures got down to 34, like I like I read, or you know. An average high of of what was it 45 during the day I mean that's I mean that's like hypothermic perfect scenario for hypothermia um, myself I would be pissed right now if I was wet and cold and just started another day um, it'd probably be I'd probably get up as soon as I could and get moving again um, so daybreak at that time of year was about uh, 7 30 so 
So I would have been on trail as soon as I could see and get out of my tent and get somewhere and get, I would want to get off the goddamn trail if I was that wet and miserable. And um, on the 13th in particular, it just hammered down rain. If you look at the Doppler, it went hard for a while that day. And um, that was probably one of the worst days of weather during this 10 day stretch of constant rain. There's just a few breaks in there. And the shitty thing is, the rain held from about White Pass north. If someone was hiking south from White Pass, you wouldn't have had much rain. You watch the radar and it's north of White Pass and then it kind of keeps creeping and staying north of just White Pass, like following the PCT up as if, you know, it was just following Sherpa's path almost if he would have been just continued hiking. It's really just like the shittiest scenario for the weather. Um, so I'm gonna move on as if I'm trying to get the get the hell out of here and try to get off trail and try to get dry. Um, there was a trail back there that I passed and I noticed on my gut hooks that took an immediate um, left off the trail and headed to the road that's down in Mount Rainier National Park. It's actually, I think it's the road that goes from um, Highway 12 and cuts over to Chinook Pass. I've hitched that road before and um, that would be a quick exit. It wasn't that far. It didn't look like probably, I don't know. I didn't look, I didn't like tap on it on the map, but it looked like it was only like five miles to the road or eight miles. I could be wrong, but that wasn't an option I looked at and went, wow, you know, if I was miserable right now and didn't want to go all the way to Chinook, I would take off right there and get to that road and, and hitch the hell out of here. Um, but if not, I'm going to look at it as, okay, where's my next exit out of here um, without, you know, getting too crazy and get myself lost. Remember, being Sherpa right now, my phone is possibly dead and I have no maps anymore. My half mile was on my phone and I don't have my phone anymore. It's dead. Um, so um, I just need to stay on trail probably so I don't get lost and find a way out, which is probably going to be Chinook Pass, which is, a, you know, still another, um, let's see, um, like, like 15 miles from here. I'd have to look at my map again, but Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I guess I'll head for Chinook and, and hopefully I, I get the hell out of here and I can get my, my stuff dry. Yeah, that would be what I'd be thinking right now. Get the fuck out of here. So that's what I'm going to do. And we'll pick up here in a little bit. So theoretically, this is morning of day thir or October 13th. So, and I would be at about... Uh, 7:30 or or so right now at this point right here at the entry to Mount Rainier National Park that's my basic math so we'll go from there all right so I wanted to share something with you that trail I was talking about just now that cuts off PCT it's called the laughing laughing Creek water trail I believe that's what it's called and I just looked at it on my map and it looks like it's about five miles and it cuts straight over to that highway in Mount Rainier National Park. It looks like downhill five mile. And from here, it's just over 10 miles to Chinook Pass. So depending on Sherpa's commitment to the trail, um, remember right now it would be, you know, 7.30 in the morning or so and I'd be getting dumped on. It'd be dumping rain on me right now. And so, do you want to get off the trail and get dry? Or do you keep pushing on and get to Chinook and say, hey, I did that section, I'm done with that. And then I'll go to town when I get to Chinook and, um, and get dried out and wait for this weather to pass.
I know. But just another option. That trail, if I was soaking wet and cold, I would have taken that trail for sure and gone down to that road and hitched my ass out of here. Anyway, that's another option, another thought. Laughing Creek Water Trail. All right, good morning. It is the following day now for me. Um, it's about 8.30 right now and I'm at Chinook Pass. And uh, if I was Sherpa, it would actually be the 13th morning, mid-morning on the 13th. And from the furthest point, I figure he would have hiked yesterday. Um, he would have got here at about uh, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 11 o'clock or so. Because it's about 10 miles from that last campsite. So at 3 miles an hour, he would have been here at about 10.30, 11, somewhere in there. Now, if I was him, it's been drizzling all morning and I'm... Um, I'm okay. I'm not I'm not cozy, but I'm okay. But he would have been rained on, flat out rained on since 5:30 last night. Um so he probably would have been pretty wet and his tent probably was wet and uh, possibly his sleeping bag depending on how how he was able to stay dry overnight. Um so I mean if I was him and I was soaking wet and I got to here right now I would hitch one way or the other. It's a long hitch to town, but my phone might be dead. You know, this phone could have, could have crapped out by now, no maps. And so I would need to get dry and I need to figure out my phone situation, my map situation. Uh, as you can see, there's, there's cars going both ways, so you can get a ride. Um, and when I got to town, I would have made contact with somebody saying, hey, had to get back off right away. I was only on trail like 24 hours or whatever, but things got ugly and I had to get dried out. So I'm here, wherever that would have been. Um, he doesn't seem like the type of person to just kind of flake out and not let anybody know where he was, especially in a situation like this. So... Um, right now it would have been still raining and I'm going to attach the radar picture to that. Um, I would have got off trail at least to dry out because until you can get somewhere, as a lot of you hikers know, you can't get dry unless the sun comes out or you get somewhere dry that you can get all your stuff out and let it hang out and dry um, you just stay miserable and cold until you can make that happen um, if you pushed on from here man I admire the guy for uh, his commitment because I would have whined and bitched and wanted to get out of here and get dry at this point um, so anyway that's my thought from here at Chinook Pass um, again Sherpa time October 13th at about just double checking in my head about 10 30 11 so anyway that's that
So this is somewhere about here is the blowout mountain area where Sherpa was last seen. A couple of bear hunters said they passed him in this area. And um and it took me I could have got here in two days. I stopped last night because there's a cabin down the way. But I could have got here in two days of hiking. And supposedly they saw Sherpa on the 22nd, 10 days after he got on trail. Um, to me, that doesn't make any sense. Um, that means he would have had to get off trail somewhere and spend, you know, at least four days or something goofing around, getting dried out, whatever, resupplying. And he would have got off at Chinook Pass to do that, probably. And so, for him to get off trail in a storm and be off trail for that many days and not make contact with somebody is a little odd to me. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who would not make contact with somebody especially if his phone had gone haywire and was dead and not charging I would have borrowed a phone found a pay phone um, emailed Facebook something made contact let everybody know he was okay and he was taking an extended break 10 days to this point I'm not really going for that um, you know, a lot of through hikers, when they get to this point, a lot of the guys, they all, they all kind of look the same. They've all got beards. Um, they're all shaggy, you know, they're all dirty. We got relatively the same looking gear. Um, so those guys could have seen somebody else. Could have been very possible they saw somebody else. Um, spent the last two days just like, it's almost mind numbing and draining, really kind of emotionally draining, thinking about Sherpa and scanning everything. Down every cliff I go by, every clearing, I'm just constantly scanning. And um, looking for any colors, any shapes that are out of, out of the norm. And uh, nothing. I've gone off on a few little side trails that have kind of caught my attention for some reason or another. Another thing I realized hiking through that last section yesterday, I did 26 miles yesterday. I started just south of Chinook Pass and um, it starts out okay but as soon as you get about five miles in from Chinook Pass, that terrain changes and it starts climbing into these ridge lines and exposed ridge lines that are like 6,500 feet. And I really, I mean, I felt in my gut that during that storm, Sherpa did not go that far. Push through that storm to being possibly wet and cold, feet wet, unable to dry out, no sun breaks. Doesn't seem right to me. So, 
I mean, my guy says if he's still out here, he's somewhere between, I'd say, 10 miles north of Chinook, south. Especially after hiking it myself, doing all the math, looking at the radar, looking at the temperatures. Uh -uh. I don't. I'm not going for the blowout mountain thing. Anyway, I think from this point forward, I'm just gonna do my hike and um, let go of the. I go to the Sherpa, searching, and, um, and I just have to stay aware for myself, for my own safety here. I don't need to be constantly thinking about that and breaking an ankle or tripping or doing something dumb myself because I'm not staying aware so this point on I'm letting go of that I hike my hike the way I normally would I feel like I've done all I could out here hopefully this video gives everybody a good um, angle to see everything from I know it's probably kind of hard when you haven't been out here and you don't know the trail and you don't know quite what it's like. Maybe this gave some non-hikers a little bit of perspective on things. I know everybody's got their own ideas and thoughts about this. And this is just mine and I could be wrong. Most definitely could be wrong. But Anyway, thanks for uh, riding along. And Thank you everybody who's helped look for Sherpa. I'm sure his family's incredibly grateful. So, take care. Happy hiking.